Hey everybody, welcome to Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ben. I'm Keenan. Hey! What? What the hell? <laughs> welcome to Earth 47 uh, Back Issues. In this episode, we'll be, uh, we slid into an alternate reality where Keenan was the third member of Back Issues. This is an old friend of ours from high school and life. Uh, thanks for being here, man. No problem. Yeah, you're on the show now. <laughs> That's two! I'm talking <laughs> about having two different people on this show in different realities. Jason was one, you're the other guy. Excellent. Welcome to the show. Ah. Also, shout out to uh, his ex-girlfriend who made this cool clock. <laughs> I was going to say, why are you dressed as Dr. Doom? Because we're doing Emperor Doom! Oh. Emperor Doom's cool. <laughs> it's a original graphic Wait, novel. What? Well, is Doom technically an emperor? He's a monarch. He's a monarch. So he could call himself Emperor Doom any one. I believe he refers to himself as a king. I thought he called it, I thought he's Baron Von Doom. No, that's uh, Baron... Uh, well, there's Baron Mordo, and uh, there's also... Baron, Baron Von Strucker. Oh, okay. Yeah, Victor Von Doom, Baron Von Strucker. Oh. Yes. And, of course, there's also Baron Zemo. There's actually a number of... There's a lot of, of Baron There's a lot of <laughs> land-owning Marvel villains. Well, I mean, they're and, all, like, middle European. Yeah, that's true. And But Doom isn't... He doesn't own Latveria. He just rules over it. Uh, in, in any case, yeah, he, he is a monarch, but he will become emperor in Emperor Doom. But yeah, I love this cloak. I've had this cloak in my uh, in my possession for what, 10, 15 years? At least. Long time, yeah. Yeah. And I've never had occasion to use it, and now I do. I think Tiffany wore it in the episode Doctor Strange, Doctor Doom Triumph and Torment as well. Okay. But I was like, we're doing a Doctor Doom centric book. I gotta wear my Doctor Doom cloak, which I can't wear fully because I have a green screen behind <laughs> me and it'll look really stupid. No, nah, just throw the hood up once. All right. Here, here. Don, don me here. See? Now I'm the background. <laughs> Hang on, we gotta get it fully there. Yeah, there we go. There. Now it's headless cell! It's not headless supposed to be like that. You're supposed to have a little bit of a back. Yeah, there I you know. Go. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Still pretty dope. That I, is I, have, awesome. I have yet to see a cosplayer have a cooler cloak than this. Unfortunately. Unless they were casting fireworks. And I was really sure that I was gonna use this cloak, like, for cosplay. And then I, like, looked into making, like, a Doctor Doom, like, mask. It's a lot of work. <laughs> Like, I saw... I, I've seen a even, lot of... Even replicas are... I, I, yeah, they're expensive or impossible to make. I've seen, like... What was it? Uh, Tinfoil Doctor Dooms? And it's like... Uh, You're not cutting it. You know what? I, let's just say I can't pull it off. Anyway, so today we're going to talk about Emperor <laughs> Doom, which is an original graphic novel from 1987. It, it was a collaboration between uh, Mark Gruenwald, Jim Shooter, the then editor-in-chief of Marvel, and uh, author David Michelinie who's actually like the scripter slash writer of this story. In fact, David Michelinie wrote a number of books. He wrote three of these in 87, 88, and 90, I think. And uh, he also wrote a number of Marvel comics. Uh, he also created Jim Rhodes, uh, Tony Stark friend, and, uh, you know, War Machine. Yeah. Though he insists that he did not create War Machine. He's like, I did not make War Machine. Someone else came up with a war machine. I do not make War Machine. I make Peace and Love Machine. Yes, I made Jim Rhodes a friend. Like a non-superpowered character in the Tony Stark world. I like the idea of having like a normal person that Tony was friends with and grounded him. And then somebody else gave him some armor and was like, screw it, Black Iron Man! Ah! <laughs> and he's like, do Damn it! Fine, I'm gonna create this dog. Yeah. Just this normal dog. Right, Iron he's... dog! <laughs> ah! He also helped co-create Venom. And again, oh, okay. had some ideas. It's It's... Look, he no, was originally Venom just a friend with no superpowers. Right? No, originally Venom. Yeah, they rock. Yeah, right? <laughs> no, Venom was originally a woman who had uh, a miscarriage during a Spider-Man event, and she hated and cursed Spider-Man for losing her baby, and then she gets the symbiote. So, be like, Oh, thank Venom. God. What? I, you, there yeah, was a I, woman who was pregnant, and how do you get Venom? I was. I thought you were going in a very bizarre direction I, with that. I, I thought the miscarriage was. Yeah, gonna was be gonna be Venom. Venom. No. Yeah. What? That's, that's oh, terrible. the suit finds the infant, and yeah, then like, it like, it like no, no, him? like it becomes it. Like her hatred like manifested somehow. Oh. She gets infected. No. Oh, no. I, I see. I thought that. I thought the symbiote. Like, because the like, suit existed in '84. Like, like it came. I thought that the kid was born and like died, and like the the, the, the symbiote like reanimated it. Reanimated some like weird fetus. <laughs> 
villain. That's horrifying. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. No, they didn't do that. Well, thank God. And no one had that idea. Well, now we have a book to pitch. That's true. <laughs> All right, Venom Two. Or Venom Jr. So Michelinie's done a lot of like really cool ideas that Marvel's like, that's cool, but what if we did this instead? And he's like, damn it! So when I reached out to him, I'm like, hey, can you tell me anything cool about Emperor Doom? And he's like, no. <laughs> I'm like, well, what was the struggle of doing it? He goes, oh, they gave me this idea, and uh, you know, I wrote it. And I, 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 I look back, and I really dug it. And I'm like, really? I feel like there's something there. He's like, no. No tortured artist. No. no. Like, weeks of like drinking and heavy smoking right no he's just yeah. he's just happy that it came out so well I'm like fair enough it was received well and they yeah. threw me a party right the no. cake could have been chocolate though and i had vanilla instead it's not really my favorite but yeah. who am i to complain yeah no they don't throw parties <laughs> <laughs> they're just like do your work get to work uh, by the way bob hall does the art in the story uh the idea being uh these original graphic novels were like they tested the waters when it came to ratings. You know, in 87, they still had the comics code, and they were still kind of like, eh, like a little hokey. Um, but right. uh, but with the graphic with novels... The, especially with some of the language? Yes. But in the well, graphic novels, they were like, it was a little... Yeah. But uh, with these, they were like, hey, like, you can kind of like push it a little... You can push the envelope a little better. A little, a little further. Because it's not a floppy. Yeah. And uh, also, maybe not really in continuity. Like, they could be, if you wanted. I was going to ask, is if this was in continuity, or if they... It, I'll let you be the judge because some things happen in here where it's like, what? And they were operating under the assumption where it's like, it's kind of not in continuity. Like, don't worry, we don't have to keep that up. Yes. But it, but it, but I think they do refer to events in this in later stories. So, yeah, it is in continuity. Can I ask, is this, this looks larger than a normal comic? It is. It's, a, it's an oversized format. This is the, what they, this is the size they went with for the original graphic novels, the Marvel graphic novels. Okay. Um, there's a number of these. The, the death of Captain Marvel was one of these. Um, uh, Doctor Strange into Shambhala is, a, is an, over, like an oversized original graphic novel. Again, like pushing the envelope in terms of rating and also uh, you know, trying something different with the art or with the story or with the, with the language or with the subject matter. And uh, I love that idea, and I wish they were doing more of these. And I reached out to McLean, and I'm like, so can you tell me more about the development of the original graphic novel and what that was all about? And he goes, uh, they cost a little more than regular comics, so I think they just wanted to make more money. <laughs> I'm like, fair like, enough. but David, like, you're, not, you're not giving me much you're here, You're not going to make on. And he's like, I'm sorry, man. They, look, I'm a hired gun for Marvel. I wrote these books, and uh, you know, I was paid for them. And sometimes, you know, you get a really interesting story. Like, I really, really am disappointed they made War Machine. And other times, you just have a... A, a timeless piece of art like this. I think his biggest complaint was that you can't really get this very much now. They don't reprint it. After that conversation, he hangs up the phone and he's like, calls a different number. He's like, Sal Crivelli's on to us. He's asking too many questions. <laughs> you gotta get him. Yeah. For his little YouTube show. <laughs> so I guess we could actually talk about what happens in this story. So, uh, okay. Emperor okay, it Doom. starts off with a purple guy. Yeah, it's Purple Man. Purple Man? Yeah. Oh, from Jessica Jones fame. Got it. Okay. But Purple Man existed for a long time. He he's, was... he's not great bubble tape guy. No. Because <laughs> that is that color. Yes. It's like to a T. Yeah, he's literally purple. I thought it was the uh, the blueberry character from uh, from Willy Wonka. Finally, like, you know, lost some of the weight. That's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Violet. It's Violet. After her, uh, after her demise, well, not demise, but uh, her father then also decided to he have ate some the, of it. He ate the... He's like, look, Violet, you're not that terrible. Oh, I, I see. love you. And then she passed, of course, and yeah. he became and a villain. He became a villain out of his hatred for, for candy oh. that turns people into giant blueberries. Right. If you're not familiar with Purple Man at all, did you watch Jessica Jones? No, I have not. Oh, man, wow. you got to You missed out. I, it's a good show. I don't have Netflix. You What? what? It's like $5 a month. I have Amazon Prime. Um, okay, that is not the same thing because I have both. not the same thing. Yeah, I have Amazon Prime as well. I have Amazon Prime for the shipping. Yeah, the and fact that we I get all some have it for the shipping. Of course, <laughs> the fact that I get some free movies is great. But, but it's not the end all. It's nowhere. Deal. It's nowhere near the the level that Netflix is. It's at. true. Like we're shilling for Netflix. Purple Man. Hey, we got a show to pitch. They're, yeah, they're not going to pick <laughs> us up. So, uh, oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, but no, uh, t Purple Man, his power is that he has like a physiology that emits a, like, a mind-altering chemical that makes people listen to him. So like, or, or do his bidding. So you can tell people and compel them to do what he wants. Which so, like, so he has like the power of hypnosis, but, but like, it's chemical. by smell. Yes. Yeah. 
It's not magical. It's more physiolo. It's more physiological. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, and by the way, you'll love it. His name is Zebediah Kilgrave. Of course. It sounds like a uh, like a mass murder in Amish. <laughs> yeah. Zebediah, we need help raising this barn. <laughs> no, you don't. No, I don't. <laughs> so why don't you build me a barn? I will build you a barn. And that's what he does. So the story opens with Kilgrave, and he's in Papite of French Polynesia. And he's just enjoying it because the idea is that uh, if you have the uh, the physiology to make anyone do whatever you want, you're just going to be kicking it up in the Caribbean or whatever. It's good to know that he's like really using that power to like <laughs> find some importance in the world. Well, he's a villain, so you know he's gonna. But actually, I like how more realistic it is. Like he's not trying to rob banks. Like he probably robbed one bank because like that's all the money I needed to get to this island. And then he just went there. Well, I don't even need that. Hey, let me on your plane. Oh, okay. okay. Like, yeah, that's it. Let Give me, me your seat. your plane. All right. right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The end. So he is. So he's kicking it, and he's just enjoying himself. And then uh, Doctor Doom shows up. By the way, you don't know it's Doctor Doom except for the fact that like the book's called Emperor Doom, and it's not called like Emperor Purple Man. So <laughs> moving on. Uh, no, Nick, that's what Doom looks like underneath his suit. He looks like a purple jackass. Yeah. No, you'll see him later. I got, I got wine stains. I, I, <laughs> I, I was, was trying to stamp, stamp them and, uh, and I fell. It's I'm hard, actually the lady from that video. <laughs> it's hard to drink wine through a metal mask. I just splash myself a lot. <laughs> what I do is I now. fill the armor with wine, and then I just drink when I want to. Oh, I got the idea from Tony Stark. It I got a really long... through the skin. No, I have a really long straw that goes all the way to the bottom. That way I don't uh, miss a drop. Right. Doctor Doom, good to the last drop. So anyway, Namor is walking through the city streets of Manhattan. Well, thank um, God it's raining so he doesn't feel left out. Yeah, well, actually the rain does help him because he needs water in order to, like, reach maximum strength and, and power. You're familiar with Namor, I hope. Yes, I'm... The Submariner. Yeah. Uh, well, so Namor The one who is... wants to bang Sue Richards like no tomorrow. Yeah, that's true. Well, who doesn't? Well, that's fair. But Namor really, really does. And unlike most, Namor might have a shot you know, because he's buff. And he's a monarch and everything. He's another one. He's not a baron, though. He's not Baron Namor. He's just Namor, because he's king. Okay. Yeah. He doesn't own Atlantis. He just rules it. Side question. Yeah. Has anyone ever wanted to bang Sue Richards, but have her be invisible at the time? Like, they, that's their fetish? Yeah. Like, I want to reverse Hollow Man. Yeah, like, where, where it's like, I want to bang the invisible woman and just have, like, a mirror on the other side. So I'm just, like, having like, sex with myself. So that just sounds like a narcissist. Yeah. I mean, I, I assume Richards does that. Like, Sue, <laughs> could, Sue, could you get out of here for a little while? Just, so, so not, not actually, just, yeah, just, just, just turn just, him invisible. Yeah. Another side question. Well, oh. For all the people whose primary motivation <laughs> seems to be with Reed Richards' wife. Seems to sleep with Reed Richards' wife. Does anyone ever want to sleep with Reed Richards? No. Other than Sue? Oh, that's not true. Uh, there was a scroll one time yes. who totally banged him. No. Didn't, they didn't bang? They didn't bang, no. How the fuck they made No, out? there was a scroll who impersonated Sue, but she was, she was repulsed by him because the scrolls, like, by culture, hate Reed Richards. Because, like, Reed Richards is basically the Captain Kirk to the Klingons, as Reed Richards is to the Skrull Empire. Like, Reed has committed too many affronts to their, like, whole existence. When they first attacked, he turned them into cows. <laughs> and, <laughs> then, and then left them in a pasture. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, and then they came back. Anyway. As cows, or? No, well, no. No, they came back as Skrulls. But they were cows. Yeah. For a long time. Yeah, they were. And that's in the Kree Skrull War. Anyway, Namor's walking through the city streets, and he's like, and he's musing to himself, as he often does, about how great he is and how crappy the surface world is. And he's been compelled to meet with someone, and they're really burying the lead in the first two pages, because we've only gotten through two pages of this book. But it's Doctor Doom. He's going to meet with Doctor Doom. But he's he's walking through the city streets, and he's like, thankfully, these these humans are so self-absorbed and involved in their own activities, they'll never recognize me. A cop immediately recognizes him. Because he sees the wings on his feet. He's not wearing shoes. And he's like, oh shit. So many people walk the streets of Manhattan with no shoes on in the 1980s. Right. With wings on their feet. With wings coming out of their feet. But this cop sees him and he immediately calls dispatch. And he's like, Namor's walking around. And he, I don't think he thinks we know. So like, we better call everybody. <laughs> I Namor... don't think he thinks we know. <laughs> I, I, and by the way, Namor will often, <laughs> like every once in a while, he will like attack the surface world. Like, if he gets a wild hair up his ass about, like, how crappy things are up here, he tries to take over. Someone threw a six-pack, like, container ring in the ocean. Again? Ooh! No! No amount of Ted Turner programming will turn me off to this. So, he, he, uh, and he actually has, I think at one point he teamed up with Dr. Doom to take over. Of course, Doom betrayed him, uh, you know. As, as he would. As he would. 
And uh, Namor helps turn the tide, as it were, uh, to defeat Doctor Doom. In any case, uh, Doom and Namor have a history together. Namor meets Doom at this, like, crazy expensive restaurant or club. And uh, he's stopped by the Mater D. And, uh, and then Doom just shoots Namor with a laser blast, destroying his Raphael from the Ninja Turtles first movie disguise. His Humphrey Bogart look. Huh. Yeah, I was going to ask, what year is this supposed to take place? 87. It, but he's still dressed like it's 1955, and there was a horse-drawn carriage on like the first page. Oh, this is no. New York. It is New York, yeah. It does look like it's like 1865 <laughs> meets 1987. Like, meets like 1940s. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like Namor's like walking through time. No, his cars are too boxy for the 40s. That, yeah. There shouldn't be cars at all. It should be this horse-drawn carriage. But I think it's I think it's a handsome cat. Yeah. But yes. Uh, in any case, uh, Doom shoots the uh, the disguise, the off, disguise of off of Namor, and Namor's like, "What's wrong with you? Uh, this this disguise was really working." <laughs> and Doom's like, "Come, come, come, stick with me." So you Namor didn't hear what I heard over the APB. <laughs> yeah. So so Namor and Doom like have a seat, and Namor's like, "Why is no one freaking out?" About you shooting me with fire, or about me being here, or you in full Doctor Doom regalia sitting at one of the tables. And he's like, ah, you see, uh, I plucked a hair from Purple Man's head, and I put it into this crystal, and I can synthesize and use Purple Man's abilities to, like, uh, like to influence the minds of men. So, like, as long as I have this special crystal that's powered by Purple Man's stuff... <laughs> I can his DNA? use yeah well yeah I can use his powers basically in effect and so I am and I would never think to use them against you who has such a strong will only those with incredibly strong wills can defeat the purple man and reject his powers Daredevil has, is one because purple man's normally a Daredevil villain which is also why it's disappointing that he's not in the Daredevil show because it's David Tennant and he's amazing I can't believe you haven't seen Jessica Jones it's such a good show you saw Daredevil right. No, I haven't like, seen any of them. Daredevil, a great oh. show. You would love that show. I know. But, like, you didn't watch it like over at someone's apartment or something. I haven't seen Daredevil. I haven't seen Punisher. You I need to put seen... Netflix on your phone. You can watch it on the bus. Doom is explaining his plan to Namor. He's like, listen, I'm not going to use this crystal against you. I, I just want you to know that I can do this and I need your help. Then but, does he use the crystal? But if you no. don't help me... You're the crystal. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to use a crystal. But he's not. But he's asking for help from Namor willingly. He was like, listen... I'm going to take over the world. That's my plan. It's always my plan, but I think I actually might have a shot this time. So, also, I can't take over the ocean because I'll rust. Yes. Well, basically, he's like, I, and you can have the ocean, which is like more of the world. So really, I'm like, basically, I'm taking over the world for you. I mean, you know, in effect. So uh, then the, uh, the waiter comes over and they're like, what would you like to eat? And Doom's like, oh, we're not eating here. This place is disgusting. So they start to leave. And as they leave, all the cops who are waiting for Nam are outside. And Doom's like, let's go. And so they just walk past them because they have the power of the crystal at their disposal. And then... Wait, does he say you can't see us? Or is he like... Namor's like, what the hell's happening? And Doom's like, duh, the crystal, don't forget. Namor's pretty sharp. The fact is, like, Michelin treats... What is... What is... Doom. What does Doom do? Like, do you have to activate the crystal? Or is it just always, like... It's always on. Right, but... So then he is using it on Namor, in a sense, if it's just always on. But Namor's will is so strong. Oh, Namor's... I thought he was, like, sucking up to Namor, and then he was just going to use the crystal on him later. That is exactly what he's going to do. Okay. (laughs) But right now... But... No, this is the problem. We're setting the stage for, like, oh, no, Doom and Namor teaming up. Does he tell the cops, stand down, or you don't see us or anything? No, uh... Because Purple Man has to tell people what he wants. Yes. He doesn't just... Yeah. ...exist, and then everyone falls around him. Right, because Purple Man's a peon. This is Doom. Doom mastered Purple Man's own powers within a few days. So yeah. All right, fair enough. <laughs> anyway, so uh, then as Namor is like talking about how amazing this is, Doom's like, oh shit, get out of the way! And they just duck into a nearby alley. He's like, pretend to kiss me! <laughs> you know, but uh, because Vision is flying overhead. The crystal, Vision has no mind! The crystal doesn't work on androids. Well, naturally, they yeah. have the same physiology. Exactly, it wouldn't work on them. So he's like, the, so the, your job is... Take out the androids. Take out the androids. All the machines that could defeat me, you will have to defeat for me. Lure them to the ocean with your siren song and then short their circuits. <laughs> yeah, or use the sea horn. I'm going to give you the crystal. You use it to get close to these these robots. And I've also used, like, I basically created, like, a like a, like a disc that you put on. It's like a magnetic disc that you put onto the robot. And it will, in effect, do the same thing. 
as the crystal, but for robots. But he couldn't just somehow get close to the robots on his own. No, he wants Namor to do it. Why? Why do anything when I have lackeys? Exactly. Doom's used to having people do what he wants, but also he needs to be close to Namor so he can take over his mind using the crystal. At least it's not a Doom bot that's no. doing all this. No, normally it's a Doom bot. Like, normally it's Doctor Doom until he is defeated, and then they try and kill him, and then it turns out it's a robot the entire time. But Doom is re- controlling it remotely. Yeah, but this would not work for that because no. yeah, the crystal, yeah, it has to be Doom. Yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. exactly. And you'll see that it's unequivocally Doom later in the story. So then we run into uh, Simon Williams, a.k.a. Wonder Man, who is at this point a like stunt man for movies. Well, because he's so good. Well, also he's indestructible. <laughs> That's a good thing to be if you're a stuntman, I guess. That's right. Well, it's a good job to have. So he's like moonlighting as a stuntman while he's working for the Avengers. But at this point in comics, there are two Avengers teams. There's the Avengers, and then there's the West Coast Avengers. Which is the terrible team. Which, <laughs> yes. So the, the West Coast Avengers are on that team, and they have Wonder Man. So, uh... Well, that makes sense. He's over in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah being a exactly. And, and how much does being an Avenger pay? I guess you probably have to, like... You, you get... Well, Iron Man runs it, so probably pretty well. Oh, okay. Plus, you, like, get free room and board. You get to stay in the mansion or in the... Wherever the hell they're staying. Yeah, where do the West Coast Avengers... They stay in, like, what looks like the Corleone's compound? <laughs> like... But with way more hideous cars. Well, it's 1987. We follow Wonder Man, who is basically going to be our protagonist in this story. So if you're not a big fan of Wonder Man, like, settle in. (laughs) Uh, So Wonder Man walks through the Avengers Mansion, or the compound, uh, and we get to meet, like, all the illustrious members of the team, like Mockingbird, who is the wife of Hawkeye, who is also there, and they're going to eat. And they invite him to hang out and eat as well because he's a member of their team and why wouldn't they? Ooh, pizza. Yes. and uh, It's very popular at this time. 87. It's very popular forever. <laughs> <laughs> it was California just... pizza. Yeah, so it's not even barely pizza. No, I just remember the scene in uh, Star Trek Four. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's... You like Italian? We meet Tigra, who's every furry's fantasy. Oh, I thought it was uh, Cheetah, but that's DC. Never mind. Sorry. Yeah, Wonder Woman villain. And, is... and also a villain. Yes. Tigra is just a... Just a hero. She shows up in um, uh, Maximum Security. She turns the tide for the Avengers that are held in uh, space. Anyway, so uh, Wonder Man meets up with Tony Stark, who is like, Cool, you're here. Great. Uh, I'm, I, I need you for an experiment. Uh, I'm going to put you in this isolation chamber for a month. And since you're, like, made of energy and you're, like, not really even human anymore, you don't need to eat. Like, he just likes to eat. He doesn't need to. And he doesn't need to go to the bathroom or anything. So... Wait, he doesn't need to eat or he doesn't need to go to the bathroom. But if he does eat, does he still go to the bathroom? I assume if you do, like, put something in your body... It's like a robot. Like, you don't need to eat. But if the robot does choose to eat, he has to get rid of that food somewhere. It's gotta go somewhere. Conservation of matter. Precisely. So, uh... Like filling in for Ethan already. (laughs) Could, Could turn into energy. Yeah. You can convert it, it burns. <laughs> he turns it into fuel. He glows or something. <laughs> <laughs> He's energy so, right now anyway. Just, I'll have more of it. <laughs> right. So Stark just sticks Wonder Man into a tube for a month. And he's supposed to be our protagonist? Yeah, yeah. But he gets off the table for a month. So Wonder Man goes into the tube. And I love how like weird it is because it's like almost like an afterthought. Like Wonder Man's like, hey, I'm going to... like I- I'm, he- I'm back from my job here at Avengers Mansion. Like, oh, do you want to get some lunch? He's like, maybe... And then Star's like, oh, good, you're here. Get in the tube for a month. Like, well, I don't want to leave Mockingbird hanging. I thought she was offering me a slice of pizza. Like, nope, get in the tube. So he gets in the tube and he just We're going to do this now. It's, yeah. It seems like a very odd relationship between Tony and uh, and Wonder Man. I agree. It's like, yeah. Uh, it's a little... You get over here and get in this tube for a month. Well, Wonder Man did volunteer for the procedure. This nebulous procedure that doesn't really explain exactly what the hell they're doing. Well, I'm trying to unleash like... off all his power. Right. <laughs> I'm basically <laughs> using his, his battery. <laughs> Powers the whole compound. This is how they start the Matrix, isn't it? <laughs> right? He's yeah. the first one. He's the first one. No. No, it's not red enough. Yeah. It's also not it's all green. stupid and annoying enough. So, uh, meanwhile, on the East Coast, Jarvis uh, alerts uh, the Vision. He's like, yo, uh, Vision, you got a guest. And it's Namor. And Namor's like, hi. And Vision's like, what are you doing, Jarvis? <laughs> so, well, what have you mean? Yeah. So, uh, Vision attacks... Namor, um, but then he finds that, like, his fellow Avengers are being mind-controlled already, and his wife is the Scarlet Witch, and uh, Eros, once a Titan and now an Avenger, uh, threatens to kill Scarlet Witch in front of him if he doesn't, like, 
stop being invisible and start like getting with the program. So uh, he does because he loves his wife so much. Because you know it's the tragedy of his, of his metal soul. So he couldn't convince Wanda to put the chip on. No. Vision. Yeah, like they start making out and she just puts the chip on him. No, it's it, it, it's not Namor style. Namor's more like a blunt force object. Mm. So uh, Namor puts the uh, the disc on uh, Vision and now he's mind controlled. So basically, Namor immediately takes over the the East Coast Avengers. Is the mind control? Is he just playing along? It is total mind control. Yeah, it no, is... no one is playing possum. It is not like a surprise. No. Okay. Yeah. In fact, to prove it, he forces Vision to dance for him, uh, and he reasons that Vision would never like emasculate himself in front of him like that. So it must work. And like, if it works <laughs> for Namor, it I guess works for the rest of us. So we're all on board. What's amazing is. This is being recorded, and so when the West Coast Avengers find out, they check the surveillance tapes, and they see Vision dancing, and they, are too, are convinced at the effectiveness of the chip because and the crystal. he's an android. He, he has no Why would he ever do that? Dance? Yeah, exactly. He doesn't feel the music in his soul, for he has no soul, so he could not possibly keep the rhythm. He has postulated many times about how silly dancing is. Exactly. <laughs> to do it now is only to betray his true control. Like, anyway. <laughs> so, uh, Doom takes over a private island... Off page, and he goes to visit it, and it's being run by like lackeys and scientists and stuff. And in the middle of this huge dome is a big crystal that has Purple Man in the middle of it, and he is being siphoned and his powers being used. Why does Purple Man's power not work on Doom? Because Doom's will is too strong. Ah, you'll see it effectively used in a, in, a, in a few minutes, I think. But is this how he's powering the crystal? Yes. Because Purple Man is inside a giant one like it? No, the crystal has a piece of hair in that in, in the crystal. Oh, so he's... The little one. This we one assume is, that this one, he's like building something he's going to use to like take over, take over, take over the world. world. Yes, yes, exactly. Do the Avengers just sit around watching surveillance tapes of the other <laughs> Avengers? Is that all they Here's do the all thing, day? I guarantee that the West Coast Avengers do. Because they have nothing to do. <laughs> They're like, let's just see what the other guys are doing. What's Captain America up to? Oh, that looks cool. <laughs> hey, Tiger, can you get me a beer? And try what? not to get as much hair in it this time. Wonder what Vision's doing. Oh, he's dancing. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's <laughs> not right. Something might be wrong. Yeah. So, uh, but what's interesting is, like, Michelini's like, no, there are a few key robot people that Namor needs to defeat. So rather than just saying, like, Namor does it. Like, let's see it. So, like, there's a member of the... Of, of the t of, of the Marvel Universe called Machine Man. It was like a sentient machine man. And, uh... That is so creative. Namor takes over his mind, too. We get to see his sequence. What about Bender? Bender is from Futurama. <laughs> Which is Fox owned, so... Yeah. Yeah, but who publishes the comics? Uh, Bongo Comics. Oh, okay. Which is, like, nothing. <laughs> so, uh, we go back to Doom's Island. We're seeing Kilgrave uh, in the cube, or in the crystal... And he's like, you're never getting away with this, Doom. If you if, if you hadn't already like sucker punched me and taken over, like I would have I would take over your mind and like make you fuck yourself. Like, and so Doom's like, everybody out, everybody try out, it. try it yeah, right now, get out, everybody. And he kicks everybody out of the room, and then he opens the crystal and he takes off his mask and he goes, I got no safeguards in place. Try it. And Purple Man says, then let me go. Jump off a bridge. Kill yourself. How is this not working? And then Doom says, now Zebediah Kilgrave. Who deserves to rule? Damn. You're like, fuck yeah. Damn. Wow, that's like Doom's, that's probably the pinnacle of cool for Dr. Doom. Easily. I mean, like, no, because Doom, no, because at one point it Doom goes, takes over like the universe. It goes from this to being defeated by Squirrel Girl. It's that happened before. It's, oh, he's, it's already lost. he's already <laughs> lost to Squirrel Girl. So now <laughs> everything is making up for that. Yes. I lost to Squirrel Girl. Exactly. Squirrel Girl. That's it. I have to be the biggest badass ever. Right, yeah. I, he was already pretty badass. He, yeah. he was. But, uh, but then he got defeated by Squirrel Girl. I agree. So the West Coast Avengers figure out that like the East Coast Avengers have, have fallen. And they know that Namor's involved. And Namor made a comment that, they, that he didn't, when he didn't realize he was being videotaped about like the island. And so the West Coast Avengers do like the bare minimum amount of detection work. Let's figure visit out... every island. <laughs> no, they just figure out which island it is first. And then they fly to Dr. Doom's Island to give battle. So Because because he's already defeated the, the real Avengers. East Coast or real Avengers. Right. So now 
not Cheetah and Hawkeye and Mockingbird, Mockingbird and Iron Man are gonna go over and, and do what Captain America and the Vision, Vision and, and the Fantastic Scarlet Four Wind themselves, and, yeah. and yeah. every other hero who may or may not have been in New York and could have found out what was going on. I'm sorry, yeah, what are Tiger's powers? She's, She's a, a tiger, tiger girl. What are what are what are Cheetah's powers from the Thundercats? Chitara. She runs really fast. Chitara, thank you. Oh yeah, Chitara is more powerful than Cheetah. Yes. <laughs> there we go. And yeah. Tigra. Yeah. Yeah. T- oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Tigra. We're talking about Tigra. She sucks. Anyway, so they uh, so they go Does to the she island. She have like claws. Yeah, she got claws and stuff. Oh. She's a tiger woman. But like metal claws, or just they're just like cat claws. Like, they're like cat they, claws. They're can strong. they like tear through walls, or do they like mess up my couch? I mean, they'll definitely mess up your couch. But like, it depends on what, what kind of wall we're talking about. Like drywall, like thin plaster. Yeah, maybe she might hurt herself though. <laughs> anyway, so they go to the island and they uh, they fight like all these cool doom bots and uh, like the island's defenses are just completely ready for them. Um, meanwhile, we also I'm amazed there's not like wave after wave of native islander. Just throw oh, themselves yeah, Doom's just using the crystal on them and making them just throw themselves at Go! Them. Just defeat them or die. Doom's got a million yeah. Doombots anyway. Why not just use them? Holy crap. Those guys look like Sentinels. Yeah, they like do. small Sentinels. They do. They're Doombots, though. Dr. Doom has many different bots. They're all called Doombots, but some of them are like Special minions Doombots. that look like Sentinels, and others are literal, like, Dr. Doom, Doom people. Clone. Yeah, and some of them are just, like, metal men that don't have any colors. But they're all Doombots. Anyway, so... Does it kind of depend on the artist? No, it's not like, I don't know what they look like. It's more like, <laughs> yes, it does. Well, okay, I'm sure it started out where it's like, I don't, I don't know what a Doombot looks like. Here's, here's a Doombot. I'm sorry. And then they went, no, Doom just has lots of bots. I just realized something. Tiger's wearing a bikini? Well, yeah. Because her outfit she... is her cool-looking, like, fur. <clears throat> so she doesn't wear armor or anything protective? Because I saw her, like... She was out in an earlier scene, uh, like by a pool, like yeah. laying down on a towel. I thought she was like going for a swim, she and was. she was, she was just off. having a good time. And but, that's why but, she was in a bikini. But no. now she goes into battle in her in same bikini. like sun bikini. Yes, that is ridiculous. Her costume is her fur. Why would she cover up the fur with a for, bikini for for practical safety purposes? I'm not gonna go <laughs> fight a bunch of like killer robots in a, like board shorts. Yeah, but your your skin isn't cool looking. It's just like you know, it's yeah, your skin. Just her skin is, it doesn't her have skin's like cool looking, but it's not like armor. No, but it is furry, and she would get overheated and probably pass out. <laughs> so anyway, the her Avengers fur sure didn't stop that laser. No, it did not. So the Avengers fight Doom. Uh, eventually, Doom just like turns on the machine, and it just it, he's like they're too late. Flip switch, and then he just takes over the world. And by that I mean like he influences the minds of everybody to just do what he wants, including those Avengers there, right? Yeah, he stopped. They, they get to Doom right when the machine turns on. They're like, okay, uh, what were we gonna do? And Doom's like, you were gonna leave because you were annoying me. And they're like, oh right, sorry, sorry, oh shit. <laughs> and they just they just scamper away. And then Doom's like, all right. So then he goes to the UN and he's like, hey everybody. I'm in charge. And they're like, well done, Doom. Hooray! You're in charge. And we see like oh, all like these characters from 1987 who would t- totally sign off on this. You know, like Reagan and Gorbachev and Fidel Castro, who would never go to the UN, but here he is now. Is that Margaret Thatcher? Sure is. Of course is. it is. Good Lord. So she looks like the mad uh, magazine guy got punched in the face and like... Oh, and, Alfred E. Newman? Yeah. And then like is wearing a wig. And then put wig. on a giant wig. So he has influenced, he turned on his machine and influenced the minds of everyone in the world yes. to accept him as emperor of the world. Yes. Why the hell are there still so many pages? It should just be over. <laughs> because Wonder Man's in a tube and he missed all this. Oh. It's been a month. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, well, no. It will have been a month. Like when he gets later. Out. Yeah, like, okay. Doom, no, it's two days later when Doom goes to the UN and he's like, I accept. And so then... Oh, so he's, he's like emperor of the world for like a good 28, not 29 days. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah. And, uh, and Namor's like, you know what? This is horseshit. Like, you're... You, you... No. I'm, I'm rejecting it. Doom's like, well, I, I actually, it's funny you say that. Like, you, one of your abilities is like your will is so strong, I would never have been able to, like... I wouldn't have necessarily been able to take over your mind using the machine, which is why I gave you a specific crystal that controls your mind... And so uh, he's like, well, th- well, then I'll just throw it away. He goes, well, don't. And he goes, oh, okay. <laughs> so then uh, Namor is basically an underling of Doom. And then we just see 
Like Doom World. Doom World. And like Doom orders all the uh, Russian troops out of Afghanistan. And uh, he he sends like farming equipment to Africa and Ethiopia. And you know he makes a, like South Africa is, tr- is transferred ownership over to like the black inhabitants. So really from this story what I'm learning is that Doom, in fact, has not really been a villain all along. Yes. And that Emperor Doom, it, like, basically is solving all the world's problems. Yes. We're saving, like, no one in the world needs any army, so we're going to save all this money. And um, and the stock market shoots up. Everyone's doing prosperous. Everybody's doing great. Yeah. There's so, and then Wonder so Man shows problems. up and screws it. <laughs> That's the Wonder lesson. Man is the villain of this story. That's right. Good, because he's terrible. So Wonder Man wakes up and... He gets out of his tube and he Wait, runs it. Tony's still hanging out. <laughs> oh, everyone's the Avengers are all like now they're basically like they're basically party planners for Doom. <laughs> they're like, oh, we're, we're designing a new float for uh, for Doom Day, and like so Tony starts like working on uh, how to redesign like the Stark shuttle to become the uh, Emperor Doom's new transport. At one point, he like moves into the White House and he's <laughs> like, this, I'm slumming it. This place is not equipped to handle the greatness of doom, but I'll it'll it'll do for now. And there are not enough uh, electrical outlets for all my bots. Yeah, <laughs> what, what the hell? So Wonder Man is like, okay, Tony, you're being weird. He goes into like the main room, and Captain America's there from the real Avengers, and he's overseeing the painting and redecoration of the Great Hall in the Avengers compound on the West Coast, because that's what Captain America's job is now. Because that's how useful he is. Doom's like, lol. So Janet Van Dyne, who of course is the Wasp, she. Uh, is actually uh, a great uh, clothing designer in reality, like in in her civilian life, and so she has been in charge of like redecorating and coming up. She's like secretary of of colors or whatever, and so she's put in charge of like making things look nice. And and they're all having a great time. The Avengers are just like this is great. We're just having a great time. Now, why does the crystal not work on Wonder Man? Because Wonder Man's not really like a person anymore. Oh, okay, but he's not an android. But he's not like. He's like a he's like an energy being. Yes, but he still has. He a, was a man. He still has a consciousness. Yeah, no, but he's but his whole his, his physiology. Oh right, his... he can't be affected phys- physiologically. Exactly. But um, um, what about Martian Manhunter? Since his well, he's in the DC, DC. universe. So oh. it doesn't matter. Aha, you're here, but so you make might... the same mistakes I do. Aha, that's the premise of the show. <laughs> Back again. <laughs> so yeah, uh, uh, why is Tiger eating kitty treats? Uh, because, Is it because Doom thinks she's just a cat person? So you will eat cat well, no, food. here's the thing. Like, they can still do what they want. It's just he also, like, removes the desire to go against Doom's grain. So, you know, she's really... She, so what she really always wants to do is eat kitty treats, apparently. <laughs> anyway, so Wonder Man's watching TV and he sees Doom having another ticker tape parade for himself. She's still wearing the same bikini, even though she's now inside, like, watching TV and eating I'm sure it's cereal. climate controlled in there. She has oh. fur. It's warm, I guess. Anyway, so Wonder Man's like, what the hell's happening here? Everybody, Doctor Doom is a villain. Like, guys, we gotta go stop Doctor Doom. And Captain America's like, ooh, good point. So he picks up the phone. He's like, you got it. I've got to get to the White House right now. It's an emergency. And he's like, Emperor Doom, Wonder Man's a dick. And Doom's like, oh, shit, I forgot about him. So then Wonder Man fights the Avengers. And wins? He gets away. Okay, good. Like, I guess he's all, all he's trying to do is escape. Yes, he's so. not trying to, like, prove he can win in a fight. And Doom, meanwhile, is like, Wonder Man? Uh, let me check Wikipedia on that guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's made of energy. Hmm. Well, like everybody, I forgot about Wonder Man. <laughs> I guess oh, I'll well, throw I guess him I'll, into the sun. Well, I guess I'll do nothing, because it's Wonder Man. And I'll send a few guys. So, the Avengers fight Wonder Man. Wonder Man barely escapes, and... Uh, he steals Hawkeye's sky cycle, which looks like a jet ski, but it can fly. And uh, he barely manages to escape, but Hawkeye, of course, like shoots its engine so he can't get too far. And uh, <clears throat> Doom has, of course, used his influence and like contacts through the media and everything to tell everyone in the world that Wonder Man is public enemy number one. So Wonder Man like falls in front of a, a grocery store, and so all the inhabitants like try to stop him because they're all beholden to doom and they also like kind of believe that he's doing the right thing so they all attack him and they're gonna Here's, if the world is working out perfectly mind control or not yeah but it's but it is technically mind control like it's not their call no the world is not going in the right direction because the world is going in that direction it's compelled to go in that direction by someone else's will we're not choosing to do that therefore it is wrong we're not choosing to be good people so it's wrong to make us be good people yes 
like I I say that's true, but all right. No, it is wrong to make people that way, but at the same time, it's really working out for the world. It is it's, working out, right? It's it is wrong to make people do things that are good. It's also wrong to run a state where minorities are oppressed in South oh, Africa and yes. have like no right to vote. That's true, and it's it's wrong to occupy small countries <laughs> right. using military force. Yes, social injustices are also <laughs> wrong. I think mind control, since it's not real. Ah, oh, but think about I, the health of the planet. Like, yeah, he is helping the Earth too. Yeah. If there were a spirit I, I of the feel earth, like this I'm is a very eighties book where the it's essentially saying yes, mind control is wrong, even when you are doing it to like say like solve all of the world's problems. Yes, like it's a super like. 80s idea. The only like, thing that we're missing is that Namor isn't like really pushing the environmental thing. Where he's just like, and it's also wrong to like dump in your oceans, and they're not doing that. That's actually one of the few things we don't see them not uh, do. The Atlanteans do that all the time. Yeah, but that's because they're basically fish people. Like, where is a fish going to dump in the ocean? I'm talking about dumping like toxic waste and stuff. Oh, I thought you meant taking a dump. No, that's, I, I realize that now. So Wonder Man literally just like dresses like Magnum P.I. and starts walking the earth. No one will recognize almost, me if I have a mustache. It yeah. looks like a weird cyclops. I know, like why he has like a red visor that doesn't end in the middle. Although, uh, wait, it, his it, eyes are red, right? Yeah. So maybe they're like reflecting, or it, it's red. They're red sunglasses. Anyway, he, like he doesn't normally wear red sunglasses. I, I, I didn't recognize it at first. I was like, no, his eyes are normally red. But then I'm like, no, his eyeballs are actually red. They are. Yes. That's weird. Then. Yeah. But he is also an actor, so you know he's like really testing his range. Maybe uh, maybe it's fa it's the fad right now. It is the eighties. Yeah. So Wonder Man I'm basically dresses. No, he dresses like a like a. I'm a biker punk. Straight laced fellow. He's wearing a turtleneck for God's yeah, sake. Yeah, it looks like some like seventies fisherman and like his <laughs> like with his with his artist's shoulder bag. Yeah, like a weird shoulder bag. His he's got like a jeans turtleneck with like the jacket over it. Yeah. He's, he's wearing, wearing a derby. A little horse. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Wonder Man basically goes like, who am I to go against? The, the, the world, right? Like, so I'm he wrong. Hasn't, he hasn't figured out that everyone else is, like, hypnotized. He just thinks no, that they he kinda, all think he that knows that is great. It's a little bit of both. Like, it's more like, if the whole world is screwed up, Wonder Man's not the one who's going to solve the problem. But <laughs> if the world is better, like, he's basically having a moral quandary. He's thinking about, like, the theology or the, you know, the... Uh, the, the ethics. The ethics. He's having an ethical quandary. If the Avengers are not needed to fight crime or super, if there is no crime other stuff, exactly. Like if they're not needed, and they seem happy, what's the problem? Maybe it's not so bad. Yeah. So he meets a blind woman who teaches him the value of who gives a shit, and he decides he's not gonna kowtow to doom. And so is, he is she also not under the influence for some reason? No, she has, no she thinks doom's swell. Anyway, so but he somehow, goes... Somehow, somehow she teaches him a lesson that free, They eat an free, apple and they... Free will is important because of apples. <laughs> so he's, he breaks back into the <laughs> Avengers Mansion on the West Coast. Which, by the way, what's amazing is, uh, because, like, Michelangelo doesn't want to write about the West Coast Avengers, he has the Avengers and the West Coast Avengers all just move into the same place. He has, he has the key, his key <laughs> members of the, of the East Coast Avengers go to the West Coast so that we can just talk about the Avengers instead of the West Coast Avengers. So Captain America's there, Wasp is there. All the characters Michelani wants to write about are in, are he, in the West doesn't, Coast. Does he ever really explain like what, like, no. what compelled... Did Doom say, like, go there yeah. in case he comes back? No, Doom told Captain America to go to the West Coast to like, oversee the like, renovation of this room. Because... Because Captain America is so known for his interior decorating skills. Captain America is technically an artist. Steve Rogers is a like is a is a consummate artist. Um, but that being said, uh, no, yeah, it's, it's just like things to be red, white, and blue all the time. <laughs> That's just his aesthetic. It's not that he wants everything to be that way. <laughs> Although uh, I don't own green or yellow or orange or purple or brown. <laughs> so, uh, Wonder Man watches all the surveillance tapes that the Avengers have on everyone apparently, and he sees that. Uh, the, the he rewatches the event when Namor takes over Vision, and he like he and he magnifies on like the quadrant enhance, enhance. and he enhances the quadrant where enough uh, we look at the uh, the 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 machine thing that he uses on Vision, and like you see or the crystal, and he sees the hair, the purple man hair, and he says, "Oh, a hair 
whose hair could uh, and he uses the oh, basest it's... man like amount of detective work and figures out that purple man must be used to influence the minds of everybody it's purple it could any be anybody yeah like he's, that's it he's like it's purple purple man so then he looks up purple man because he doesn't know who Purple Man is, because he doesn't <laughs> fight Purple Man. So he's like, okay, he fights Daredevil. Well, I'm not going to deal with Daredevil. But apparently he has to, let, like, he, he reasons the whole strong will thing. So he's like, okay, I can't beat Doctor Doom by myself. I don't know how, since I could literally... I, I'm not affected by the crystal. So if I just go there and wait for him to fall asleep, I can kill him. But, like, I need a team. Doom doesn't really have powers. Yeah, he does. No, I mean, and, well, well he, I mean, he's incredibly smart. He's smart. His, yeah. his power is his weapon. Or so, like, his, his brain is his, is his powers. And he's got, he's got, like, weapons in his suit. Yes, he has an, he's basically a magic Iron Man. He has his he Iron Man suit, and he also has, uh, he has, he has some control over magic spells. Yeah. He went back in time and met Morgan Le Fay, and in exchange for some sweet hot lovin', he, he learned some cool magic powers. Oh, okay. So anyway, uh, Wonder Man's like, okay, well, I can only recruit people who have the strongest of wills to go on this mission. So I can't... Well, that should be nobody because they're, they're all mind control. Yeah, but it is... It, so is, like, everybody. You know, like... Like, Reagan and... Well, Reagan was probably asleep at this point. But, like, everybody is controlled. He has to, like... He has to push them to, he has like... to pull them out of their, of their trance. They weren't, like, doing... They weren't ready for the mind control. Yeah. But if he... If he if you gotta snap, snap out of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah wake up. He so, needs like a camera flash or the bucket of water or whatever. You know, whatever yeah, it is. The bucket like... of water for him is is just just yelling at him. So uh, he, <laughs> stop uh, it. Yeah. So stop he, it out. So he goes to to Captain America, and Captain America's like, oh no, Wonder Man. So then they fight, and then he basically manages to grab Captain America long enough to force him to watch old Avengers tapes of Doctor Doom being a bad guy. And he's like, you gotta stop this! I love you, Captain America! <laughs> he's just forcing him to look. He's like, look, Dr. Doom fought the Fantastic Four and the Avengers! Look at him fighting everybody, trying to take over the world! And Cap's like, ah! And then he snaps out of it. I do love that pose. Where he's freaking out. No! Yeah, he, he Captain Picard's it from the first contact. And he breaks their little computers. <laughs> but he says, we've gotta stop! We've gotta stop Dr. Doom! And Simon's like, yeah! Now we gotta get it, the rest of the team! So they get together and they get a. They're like, okay, well, we're not getting Tiger. Well, let's go get let's go get Hawkeye. He needs a const a, 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 a huge will to uh, to have such great bowman skills and also to not cry every time he's standing next to people with actual powers and then <laughs> is immediately defeated. So, yay! So then Cap tricks the strongest willed Avengers to watch like <laughs> to check out like some some computer simulations for like education programs. And it's just basically the same video that Simon made Cap watch. And it snaps them out. And Simon and Cap have like an argument about Tony Stark. Because Cap's like, and we'll call Tony! And Simon's like, he's an alcoholic. I'm not, I'm not saying that like, he's not a great guy. Yeah. But in terms of like, willpower? willpower? And Cap's like, no, but he's not anymore. And that takes tremendous will. We need to have faith in our friends. And so Simon's like, okay... So Stark is also part of the the, the de education program, and he's like, and and Michelini makes it so that like Tony Stark seems like you can't trust him. You know, Simon's like, yo, so so Tony, Doctor Doom's our enemy, right? And he's like, right, right, our our enemy. Yes, yes, we have to defeat our enemies, don't we? Simon's like, yeah. Why are you saying like that? <laughs> huh? I don't know. Saying like what? Saying it all like all weird, like like you're not really sure, like I, like I shouldn't trust you or something. No, no, no. I, that's how I talk about all kinds of things. Yes, yes. Oh we yeah, should, we should get pizza. Oh yeah, I I totally believe you want pizza right now. No, no, no. I'm you're I'm pulling all... out the Chinese food menu as we no, speak. I'm all about it. I'm all about it. Yeah. Okay, you just you, you circle Clint Patrick. <laughs> and Doom, meanwhile, is having a miserable time because Why? taking over the world is really hard. Like, people are like, pe whenever he's outside, people are like, Doom, you're so great, we love you, ah, Doom! And he's like, get out of my face. And meanwhile... When Shouldn't that not happen if he doesn't want it to? Yeah, but, like, he does. Like, in, in a world where Doom solved all the problems, like, they all do worship Doom, even though he compelled them to worship him. You see, it's, it's all, like, it's all complicated. Yeah, so, but if he's annoyed by it, be like, stop worshiping me. He well, should. Doom... Doom is an interesting character in that he both wants to rule the world and hates people. Yes! So he, it's almost like he would like to rule a world that was devoid of people. Yeah, like, he should just move to Mars. You know, it'd be great. And then he could run a planet. Or replace all you with Doombots. 
Yeah. Hmm. Well, he already lives around Doomba. It's like, it would just, yeah. It's more like he just wants to leave. Like, he should just go. But instead, uh, he's just, he's sick of it. And he's just like, ugh. And, uh. And and so they get a report from his like top security advisors that like the Avengers are going to the island, and he's like, yes, like an adversary, this is me, like fighting against people who might beat me, that's who I am. So he's really excited, and he kind of like lets them get through some defenses, and so they do, and so the Avengers are making their way through, and uh, not too many though. I don't want to tip them off. Yeah, right. No, exactly. And so they get through, and Doom throws like ridiculous ant tanks and uh, like gi joe toys at him and you know the doom buffs it's a, it's a cool action sequence basically but we see like iron man is part of the team and he's like fighting also and you get the impression that like iron man might turn on them because like hawkeye gets sprayed with some gas and iron man's like hawkeye's in trouble but He's really my enemy. I have to stop him. I have to save Do- like I have to save Hawkeye. And so you're like, oh, it's like a heel turn. Yay, Iron Man did have the will to defeat the programming after all. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah. So So then there's a Doom tank. Yeah. It's a cool tank with this green and has the letter D on it. Looks like a little Zeppelin with treads. It's it's a mess. It's 1987. These they look exactly like. I, I think I own one of those. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm fairly certain uh, Cobra Command had one of those. No doubt. Wasp flies through the pipe. She finds uh, Namor and uh, she shoots the crystal off of Namor. She destroys it. Where's the Ant Man at this point? Uh, he he is being mind controlled. Oh, okay. on the mainland. So <laughs> so Ant Man. So Michelini really wanted Wasp, mm-hmm. but not Ant Man. Yeah. Okay. Well, and like, Wasp was a founding member of the Avengers. And she Ant can Man fly. is not. Okay. And she can fly. And she, she's way better than Ant Man. She's got her Wasp sting. Yeah. She her can Venom she Blast can, or whatever the hell it is. Uh, Spider Woman has Venom Blasts. Wasp has a Wasp sting. Okay. But yes. Anyway, so Wasp shoots the crystal off of Namor. Namor is then like woken up, but he's still like addled by the effects of the mind control. Um, so then they reason that. Uh, that's because he's been out of water for so long that he was he was susceptible to Doom's influence. So then, while she's being crushed by Namor, she shoots an, a, a nearby aquarium tank and splashes Namor with water. And then he gets angry because all the fish dead. No, he's <laughs> not like... <laughs> I mean, I'm sure he'll use it as a justification to take over the surface world at some point later. But for now... You bitch! Yeah, but for now, he is angry at Doom for controlling his mind, so then he uh, helps out. The, the Avengers. And what's great is like Doom's watching all this on like the monitors and he's like yes. and he's like in order for, he's like the Avengers are gonna win unless I push this special button that will like stop them and he doesn't push it. He's like mm. and as he's about to push it his like security advisor starts talking about like border disputes and meetings and how he has to go to Delaware and he's like you Delaware. <laughs> Fuck this. Ruling the world is not worth going to Delaware. Doom just lets it happen. So Namor goes up to the crystal where Purple Man's being held. And he's like, screw you, Doom. And he smashes the crystal. Meanwhile, Purple Man's in there. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm in here. And then he just smashes it and kills Purple Man. What? Yeah. But then uh, no one uses Purple Man for almost 10 years. And then they just established that like he didn't die when this happened. Like, ah, just never mind. And oh, really, so like, this is one of the things where, like, it's, it's not just, in continuity. Right, but, like, all this happened, but, like, maybe it wasn't a month, maybe it was more like two days, and maybe Purple Man didn't die, maybe he just, like, got hurt really bad. And then everyone forgot about him for ten years because he's Purple Man. Yeah, exactly. So, then, as the crystal shatters, we get to see, like, in the fragments, like, all the undoing of the of, of Emperor Doom's rule. Great. So the, yeah, world so turns the to Russians shit again. reinvade Afghanistan mm-hmm. and they re like suppress and imprison all the minorities in South Africa and reinstitute apartheid and gang warfare comes back to Los Angeles and the generals Wars are being fought. Generals are screaming to take re- over rearm. Back. No, because they uh, Doom removed all like the nukes. Yeah. So yeah. so just so Doom like made the world awesome and now the world is less awesome yes. because of our villain Wonder Man. Because, no, because humanity is the true villain. Yeah. 
So no, then I, I, I stick with my earlier appraisal that, that Doom is in fact the hero of and and Wonder, Wonder Man is the Wonder villain. Man is the villain of this story. Doom gets into the like Doctor Evil escape pod and launches away. And Namor says like that everybody from the surface sucks, and so he leaves. And the Avengers fly home in like a chopper. How is this the end of the book? There's no like more? Well no, they steal a helicopter. The Avengers <laughs> After 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 dooming the world to its own demise, they steal a helicopter and fly home. Mission accomplished. And while they're doing it, they're but like, it's, but it's badly leaking. There's oil dripping in the <laughs> ocean. And yeah, but the fish are choking. The Avengers basically like muse about like the the, the ethical problems of life. Oh, guys, literally like shooting whales out the like door of that helicopter. <laughs> hey, you guys ever try essential oils before? That ambergris, it's good stuff. So. <laughs> so they're watching, watching perfume. They're watching like TV while they're flying home, and like they're seeing all the shit that we just went over about how bad everything's getting. And they're like, like Hawkeye makes a comment like, "Is it really better? Like, did we really fix things?" And Captain America says, "People are free to make their own choices. Like, it may not be perfect, but that's how the world should be." And you're like, "All right, yes, but <laughs> oh yeah, no, absolutely, yes, yes but." but. People are awful, and and but so is Doom. But so is Doom. Here's but he th- wasn't so awful in this. He didn't really do that much awful. Yeah, it's stuff. not like he was like, oh, well, like uh, people who like are sick. Like you know, he isn't like all about like, okay, well, if if you have people who have bad eyesight, like throw them into the furnace. Like, right. He didn't. There seemed to be no real negative repercussions from this, other than the loss of. A free Some will. amount of free will. Yes, and uh, not not total free will. Just just the just the part of free will that allows the world to be crappy, like the negative parts. Yes. Yeah. So like, it's not like Hitler uh, didn't do bad stuff when he took over the world. Oh, you're saying like, yeah. Like, all right. So you you st- Captain America the, stopped Hitler. The trains did We're technically fucking. run on time, is what you're saying. In World War Two. No, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> that's not what I'm saying at all. Oh, good. I'm saying. Hitler tried to take over the world, mm-hmm. uh, and that was removing p- people's free will. Yeah. But he also did a lot of bad shit, so we well, yeah. stop him. Right. We had to stop him. Uh, Doom took away free will, but he also did a lot of good shit. But because you took away free will, you still had to stop him? Yeah. But I don't think like free will was the baseline for those two scenarios. I think it's more just like, we're, 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 we're looking at how bad the world is, and basically the lesson is that like we have to solve our own problems. We can't uh, look to well, the Avengers well, to save the day. We that's also what, can't look well, to, like, exactly. That's what Doom did. <laughs> Wait, we had solved our problems, and then they unsolved our no, problems. No, because we didn't solve them. Doom solved them. And he solved them by making us less than human. By okay. taking away the things that make us fallible. Uh, so when a supervillain attacks the city, we should tell the Avengers, Hey, stop it. We have to solve our problems. I mean, Don't like, you solve our we problems have, for us. Listen, we have police and firemen to deal with that. The Avengers but deal with super crime in, and super in, disasters. In this world, yeah, but we no, they also... Shouldn't. Wait, no, we, they should because super problems require super solutions. Yes, but like Doom had. <laughs> Doom is not a superhero. <laughs> one could say that something like racism could be a super problem that perhaps oh, Captain that the, America the, could deal with. I mean, like he's trying. <laughs> he really doesn't seem to be trying. Now look, he's, we've had he's Captain trying. America for like seventy years, and, he didn't and have, we still he have was racism. asleep for most of those. And the fact is, what about the rest of the Avengers then? Look, you know, it's not yeah, a priority. Where is Hawkeye? How are arrows not solving, like, famine? That being said, you know, it's interesting. Recent, <laughs> recent years, Hawkeye has become more of, like, a, 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 a social justice warrior. Where he's like, I'm not going to solve my problems shooting arrows. I did shoot the Hulk in the face with one earlier, <laughs> and he died. But now that I've done that, I should also learn the lesson of, like, solving problems with words. So that he just, like, leaves and tries to, like, solve social problems. And then but no he one tries to well, solve them with well, arrows. He he doesn't, he doesn't like, work, so he puts well, a, a word thing. racist on the tip of an arrow, yeah. and he shoots people in the forehead, yeah. so it just imprints there. That's just fear, ultimately. <laughs> That's just like, the racists will see these dead racists and see a flag that's just <laughs> racist on their foreheads, and, the, and they'll stop it. Well, well no. I'm not saying kill them, I'm saying oh, yeah, you, you hit them in, like, like, with a word. He's brand them. Oh, ah, yeah. ah, good, yeah. So it says like racist on their forehead, so then everyone else can be like, oh, you're a racist. I and will deal with you as I will such. not be one because otherwise I'll be branded. Because that's <laughs> not the less just, just like in Inglorious Bastards by cutting the swastika in the foreheads of the Nazis. Oh, yes. Yeah, that didn't... But he wasn't doing it to make them not be Nazis anymore. He was basically doing that to say, you'll never not be a Nazi <laughs> in my eyes. 
That's still psycho behavior. Oh, I agree. I'm not advocating. Anyway, <laughs> Emperor Doom was from 87. And what's interesting is, this is the other tidbit I got from Michelini that was not a, a, a hand-wavy, I really enjoyed it. He was asked in, in 2008 to do a sequel to Emperor Doom. And they were like, hey, how about a sequel? And he's like, I'm was it, down. Was it Secret Wars? No, no, that was Hickman. He did that later. But like, I'm just saying, like, that's the other great Doom thing I can think of. Yeah, Secret Wars. Was Doom the... took over again. Yeah, only this time only it took... was all of reality. Yeah, he took over everything, and you would love it. Uh, so, you know what? You know, no, it's not like this at all because it's chaotic and a nightmare over there. But anyway, Emperor Doom Two, which I don't know what the title was going to be, but it was the se- it was the, the plan was do the sequel and it'll be great in 2008 and all throughout like 2008. He developed it, wrote it, and got it all ready to go. And then, like, uh, like the the the, the editor in charge uh, sent like his sub editor to reach out to Michelini, and he made a couple changes because like the idea was that Michelini's like, okay, well here's the story, and the story was about like Marvel in 2008, and they were like, ooh, no, like you need to make a few changes to make it more evergreen, which is incidentally like the first time you ever heard that term used in like editorial speak. So like timeless. Yes. Which, kind of like this, except that it's totally not, because, like, Gorbachev's in it. Well, so other than the faces, because we've seen uh, instances like that when, like, Elizabeth Banks... Like, yes, uh, so Shannon, Shannon, Shannon Elizabeth, Elizabeth, yeah. Was, like, the, in that book, like, you're like, all yeah, right, this is not timeless. No, that's true. No, and they were like, just make it more timeless. Like, and I, I see where they're coming from, because, like, I think around, like, around the similar time they did the JLA Avengers crossover, and it should be a timeless book, but, like, it was mired in fixes because they were like okay no it's happening now and so george perez is drawing all these things and then he gets like notes back like green lantern doesn't look like that right now you have to make green lantern look like he does in the comics right now so like green lantern who is kyle rayner which is already cemented in time is dressed like kyle rayner green lantern in that year in that like six to eight month window and then, like, they changed the costume again after the book came out, so it's already irrelevant. Like, it's just such a stupid idea. Not only that, but, like, you have to make the number one song in America like this. Yeah. Because suddenly it changed in the charts last week. You wrote the script, like, three months ago. Yeah, you said you referenced the number one song, and it's not that. Like, don't do that, then. Just take out the line. Don't change the song. <laughs> so they're like, Michelin, we need you to change, the, like, these, these, these cosmetic things to make it more evergreen. So he did. Sends the pitch back. Then he gets a call from the sub-editor who's like, yo... This is not timeless enough. You gotta change it. You gotta make it more evergreen. And he's like, son of a bitch, the, the, the other guy didn't read the new draft. He only read the old draft. And so I'm like, no, you have the new draft with the evergreen changes. And then he didn't hear back. And then he's like, they didn't call me. Well, I'll we'll, wait. We'll just see how long it takes for them to call to get their Emperor Doom 2. And a year goes by <laughs> and nobody calls. <laughs> And, for, and by the time he finally gets fed up and calls them back, they're like, oh, well, I knocked the idea around, and then they, they, they don't want to do it now. And it's like, yeah, there's a sequel to this. It's never been read where this ever made. But, it, but it's like the script is finished. Yeah, I, I should have asked him for it. Yeah, I was going to say, did you, ask, did you ask him, like, do what you happened? Know anything about what happens in the script? No! Does it even, like, is it, is, is it Doom trying to be Emperor? It's is gotta Purple be, Man in if it? If it's Emperor Doom 2, then, like, I got, I got a few certainties. Number one, the yeah. Avengers are in it because it's an Avengers story. Number two, Doom is in it. Number two, Doom is in it. He's trying to take over the world, which is fitting. Uh, number three, Purple Man's in it because Purple Man had been resurrected by that time. Because Ben has used him in uh, Jessica Jones' book, Alias. He's really good. You read Alias? It's the basis for the Jessica Jones show. I should read that. You should. It's really good. It's written by Barbara Michael Bennett. And you don't need to get Netflix to read it. No, I can you just don't. give it to you. Except I want it. But I'll just order you a copy on Amazon. I understand you have Prime now. I do. So you can just order it. It'll be free shipping. Anyway, Hooray! so Emperor Doom, uh, like, like, like David said, it's not available in reprints, but I'm sure you can get it because I did. Uh, just, I'll, I'll put a link in the description box down below for you to grab a copy that I found on Amazon. Uh, hopefully it's still there by the time you want to buy it, but if not, uh, you know, you can call your local comic book store and ask them for it. I, they made a lot of these, and, uh, yeah, they're take pretty some cheap, boxes. so, you know, they're fun. I like these. I really like the original graphic novel idea. I wish they would bring it back. I wish they'd do more of these. It's just a little disposable story that maybe has, like, a moral, but, uh, but like we said, it's a little bit, uh, dicey, you know? Like, it's ethically, uh, you know, compromised. I don't, I, don't know what, I don't know what the real lesson here is. I mean, look, I, I think Emperor Doom is still the bad guy. 
but uh, I see that there's uh, there's some dissension on the couch here. Too. No, no, he's a bad guy. He's definitely a bad guy. No, he but is. He does a lot of good. Yeah, but then like he, here's the thing. He's he gets bored and then just lets it all fall apart. That is truly not the person to rule. Uh, who is? No one. People are, as by and large. Maybe Captain America. I don't know but, because people do a good job. What we do is we pick someone who leads us, and we. We don't really pick anyone who's any better than Doctor Doom. Well, that's very true. And then we bitch and moan. Well, that's maybe that's nature. the point. That what? That we should we should have pissed and moaned harder. No, that the like human nature is to like like we pick someone in order to like put our put the blame on them. We know that the problems are essentially unsolvable because human beings are garbage. Right. And so we pick someone. Essentially, we are we just select a scapegoat. That we can blame for the fact to for the fact that we as a collective are garbage. Right. But, but once in a while we get to celebrate their successes. Yeah. And say, hey, that came from our country. Right. We did that. We elected a person who made a decision that everyone by and large we, agreed with. We elected someone who solved one of the problems that our own garbageness caused. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Doom solved all of them. It'd be like Doom solves all of them, but then. Wonder Man comes in and ruins everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even if he got bored. Even if that. Yeah. We don't get to see the continuation of he at him least abandoning like, us. Yeah, but he could have gotten bored and left, but like still left the imprint of the crystal that's like, hey, don't, don't hate people for stupid reasons and you don't need nuclear weapons. Right. I, what if he died? Which what he will he... do. Eventually. What Eventually. If, then who's in charge? Like, who's going to tell... What if some jackass goes like, Hey, uh, Purple Man, uh, that's over. Oh, you mean re- you mean soon. Because I'm thinking, like, if in 20 years or 30 years he dies If they don't have any free age. will, that's not, it's not like we're going to be, like, hardwired to be good. No, but we've got, like, 20 or 30 good years of being good history. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe we stand on principle then and be like, hey, no, we haven't done this for a long time. Oh, you, that's, then, this then, the then, we'll find, then. then we'll find I mean, the inner strength to resist then, the Purple Man's charm. No, no, what, because he, like, what, he's, what he's saying is that if you gave, if Doom gave us time, Doom could be our teacher. He could uh, show us that tolerance and acceptance and, and, and good things, yeah. yeah. That those all actually work instead of like nuking each other and like shitting on people because they look different right. and like intolerance and. Or like. Hey, I want what you have. Yeah. That's not fair. So, but he isn't teaching us anything because he just made us do it. Are you saying that, like, because he created, like, a baseline of, like, this is what it is. You were living in the world well, that you could have. Well, then, it, you, as you said, you were not totally brainwashed. So no, that's true. So it's possible after 20, 30 years of just doing it that it that it does imprint on a certain level. And then we recognize that even when the brainwashing ends, we look around and we're like, oh, Doom helped us build Utopia. Right. We better not fuck it up. Or we are only like that because we've been conditioned by years of programming to be that way. And that's not really true goodness. That's just being told a certain thing. It's not true goodness, but we could make it that. No, it just... We're not given that opportunity. Yeah, no one would interpret it that way. No one on the outside would certainly interpret it that way. They'd be like, you've been brainwashed. You're brainwashed. Go back to hating people. It's better to choose to do good. But we're not going to choose to do good. We are people. The lesson is that you, the, the deep inside humanity would choose to do good. Maybe, Maybe like should. Captain Some America us. can choose to do good. He always does. Unless he's a and Nazi. Make, unless he's a Nazi. Well, anyway, we'll see you guys next week <laughs> in another episode. Thanks so much for being here, Keenan. Great job. Woo. Nice work on the couch. Way to fill in for Ethan. Thank you so much. Now get out and never come back. <laughs> it's true. Bye.